Welcome to Fight News Now. I'm John Pollock. We have all of your mixed martial arts news, and we'll discuss all of it with John Randine and Robin Black. In the news today, there is a new fight for UFC 196 in February. A Sarah Longo fighter goes under the knife. The new middleweight champion speaks about what he wants next, and another champion inks a new deal with the UFC. It was reported by Ariel Hawani on UFC Tonight that heavyweight champion Fabricio Verdum has signed a new eight-fight deal with the UFC, worth a reported seven figures, though exact terms have not been disclosed. Verdum has won six straight fights, including winning the title in his last outing this past June by submitting Cain Velasquez at UFC 188. He defends the title against Velasquez in a rematch coming up February the 6th at UFC 196. The new UFC middleweight champion Luke Rockhold appeared on UFC tonight on Wednesday and gave out his plan for 2016. It includes fighting Vitor Belfort at UFC 200 in a rematch and retiring the Brazilian fighter while also avenging his loss to Belfort from May of 2013. Rockhold was quick to throw out the name of Belfort when asked about who he would like to defend his title against this past Saturday, with the candidates being Belfort, Yoel Romero or a rematch with Chris Weidman. Ariel Hawani also reported that lightweight ally Aquinta underwent surgery on his knee this past Monday and will be on the shelf for three to four months rehabbing the knee. Aquinta is coming off a split decision victory over Jorge Masvidal from this past April and is currently ranked 10th in the lightweight division. And it was also announced on UFC Tonight that light heavyweights Ovin St. Pru and Rafael Feijão Cavalcante will fight on February the 6th at UFC 196 in Las Vegas over Super Bowl weekend. Ovin St. Preux has six wins inside of the Octagon, but is coming off a loss to Glover Teixeira from this past August. Beijal has lost three of his last four, coming off losses to Ryan Bader and Patrick Cummins. And Fight Network is giving away a pair of tickets to UFC 195 in Las Vegas coming up on January the 2nd. All you have to do is check us out on Twitter at FightNet, retweet our post, and you're in a draw to win the tickets to UFC 195. Next week, Robin Black, John Ramdean, Corey Erdman, and myself will be running through the entire year in combat sports. It's our year in review special. Check your local listings. It will be airing throughout the holiday season. Here with John Ramdean and Robin Black, lots of news going on in the world of mixed martial arts. Let's talk about the new middleweight champion, Luke Rockhold, because I feel over the, the entire weekend and coming out of it, he's somewhat been, his win has been overlooked, I feel, a little bit. It was a great performance he had against Chris Weidman. Afterwards, coming out, the fact that he was dealing with staph infection going into that particular fight. Nonetheless, he is the new middleweight champion, and it brings about the debate about who is going to be the next contender at 185 pounds. You would have thought that Yoel Romero getting that win would be the automatic contender, but that doesn't seem to be the case when you're weighing everything. There is the possible rematch with Chris Weidman. There's Vitor Belfort that Belfort is all game for and Rockhold is pushing hardest for. So you have options at 185 pounds for the next contender. Yeah, I think the best option right now in terms of uh, you know eyeballs is that rematch with uh, Vitor Belfort, especially if you can get it in Brazil. Vitor Belfort's a massive star. Uh, Rockhold wants it back. He's you know, has made fun of Vitor in the past, accused him of all these things. And I think uh, the Luke Rockhold on Saturday that we got to see against Chris Weidman, that's the real Luke Rockhold. The, the one that we saw against Vitor Belfort, he just slipped on the banana peel on top of the fact that Vitor uh, is, has all that experience and everything else that was going through his body. So I think if you want, it, when it comes down to... The biggest fight you could possibly get, maybe it's the rematch with Chris Weidman, but I have a feeling it's the, it's the rematch with Vitor Belfort. Yeah, and I think the Luke Rockhold on Saturday beats the Vitor uh, Belfort on testosterone. And the Vitor Belfort, who kind of has a dad bod, I think we've seen his best day. Going in and getting rid of Dan Henderson almost exactly like you did when you were all gassed up and being able to do it without doesn't mean you can do what you did to Luke Rockhold. That, uh, that fast twitch muscle, the density of musculature, how hard you can train, all of that changes. Vitor still has the skill set and the ability and the mind and all of those things, but he doesn't have that extra zip that he had when he was el had elevated testosterone that just came down to just that top level by fight time. Now they test you throughout. They test you for synthetic testosterone. And if he needed it before, then he either needs it now or he's cheating or he's off it and he can't perform. One of those things is, has, is, has to be the case. Is there any outside chance that Anderson Silva comes into the conversation? Uh, if, if you're talking strictly about what is, what is going to be the most marketable fight, an Anderson Silva fight with Luke Rockhold certainly has to be discussed. If Vitor Belfort's an option, I think Anderson Silva's an option. Maybe, but it depends on the motivation of Anderson Silva. I mean, he was there. It's like, okay, all these guys are young. They're genetically superior. Do I want to get myself into a scenario like that? 
I'm actually the commodity. I can main event any uh, pay-per-view or fight card on the planet. Just give me the best opponents. Vitor Belfort's a very good opponent. Dan Henderson's a good opponent. I don't know if Luke Rockhold's uh, that good of an opponent for Anderson Silva. No. If you're Anderson Silva. I don't think so. Yeah. Not at 40 years old. Not at 40 years old with stringent drug testing. You know, maybe it was the boner juice, but more likely he needed a little extra something. It's a new era now. It's a level playing field, and that does change things. At 40 years old, you can't go in against a thoroughbred like that no. guy. Come on. You, you just can't do it. Doesn't matter how super skilled you are. He's super skilled too, and he's young, and he's genetically superior. Anderson wanted Vitor, uh, but the UFC said straight up, Vitor said no, he kiboshed that. He's already lost to Anderson in a spectacular way. Maybe that's too big a risk for him to do. They have a weird rivalry for two guys that are both big stars in Brazil. Yeah, I think that the Vitor Belfort option is ludicrous as it sounds. I mean, that, that commercial that, that you can put together of Ooh. the first fight, and especially if it happens in Brazil, to me, it is the most marketable of all your options. And Yoel Romero, I can't think of a time where a guy who is, if you're strictly looking at record and what he's done to deserve it, he is the most deserving of the candidates. But it, I me, don't know about that because we look at that performance. The guy grabbed the cage. Many people believe God told him to. Uh, God told him to. Many people believe the Jacare won rounds two and rounds three in their uh, middleweight matchup at uh, the big event that just happened. So I think that. It depends on what happens. I think have Chris Weidman come back, have him face Yoel Romero. You've got uh, well, that's probably the option. I think that's, that's, that's what you got to do. Two wrestlers yeah. going at it, and uh, Chris Weidman. I don't know if you read his uh, social media post, he said this is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Uh, I'm a competitor, and I can't wait to come back. And we know he's going to come back. Well, I didn't expect him to release well, a statement saying this is the but, worst uh, thing that's yeah. ever Look happened. Look at Ronda Rousey, though. Look at Ronda. It's like yeah. Hey, Chris became an unbeatable UFC champion by going back and taking the lessons that he learned from his failures at the NCAA final level. That's how he became. He said it to us right at this desk. He said those failures helped make him the UFC champion. This failure will help mm. him get to his next level of evolution. Quickly, uh, Fabrizio Verdum signs a new eight-fight deal with the UFC. It will likely take him to the end of his career inside of the organization. And we haven't discussed it yet, but the rematch was confirmed over the weekend with Cain Velasquez, February the 6th in Las Vegas. Very important fight for Cain Velasquez because we could be facing a reality in the heavyweight division where Cain Velasquez is temporarily frozen out of that division. A very must-win scenario for Cain Velasquez. I actually don't think so. I think that Cain, especially after talking with him, are there are certain fighters that have gotten to the pinnacle where they can, it's like win or, win or lose, I'm still a name. Frank Mir lost four fights in a row and still headlining fights. Cain Velasquez has proven to be one of the best, if not the best heavyweight of the last five years. So it's just was a little bit strange talking to him. He didn't seem uh, overly motivated. He said, you know, I did all the right things in that first fight. Was, okay, well, if, if you think that, I mean, hopefully uh, you've, you've really studied Fabrizio Verdum and everything that he brought to the table. But even if Cain Velasquez loses this fight, he's still going to get big paydays and he can headline any fight night card or uh, fight card on Fox. I think he's just going to be that's fine. That's a big drop, though. From it the, is a big drop. But a guy uh, that, that's a heavyweight champion that's yep. headlining pay-per-views. I mean, there's a, I think there's a, there's a big step back. It depends what your original motivation, motivation is, was. Yeah. And if his was to be the champion a couple times and get rich, done. we're done that. So maybe we'll see. All right. And we are done. Robin Black, John Ramdean, I am John Pollock. Stay tuned for more of Fight News Now.